Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. We are coming to you from Navitar headquarters in the New York Financial District. I'm Alan Siegert of Navitar. With me is Jarvis Cromwell, an advisor to Navitar. Jarvis is known in the wealth management industry for launching Bloomberg Black, as well as holding a number of media content and marketing positions in the financial services industry. He also chairs the Bloomberg Alternatives Marketing Council. And finally, we are joined by Navitar co-founder, Kayton Konkar, who heads all our products and services for Navitar. Today's discussion, the fix for the mix, is about using technology to lead, not lag. And we're going to talk about how to prepare and execute your response to the inevitable client reaction to volatility. And we may have some volatility for you as well today because the Fed rate decision is only minutes away. We will demonstrate how Navitar One and the new VAX rating weaponizes your team to handle a potentially difficult situation. And we'll answer your questions at the end. Just enter your questions as they occur to you into the Go to Meeting control panel on the right side of your screen. Jarvis, on Wall Street, they call the VIX the fear index. <laughs> what happens when it spikes? Well, you got a, uh, a good example of what happens with it when it spikes, Alan, right here in this slide. And I'm, I'm watching your screen as well. Uh, with the Fed rate decision, and, and we'll see what that might do. I don't, I don't expect a lot of uh, necessarily volatility out of that, but I'd love to poll everybody on the call and uh, see what kind of group we have with that. But, you know, here's the thinking. Uh, this is a one-year picture of the VAX, uh, and you can see it's uh, uh, the VIX, and you can see that it's uh, really pretty quite smooth uh, sailing for a lot of uh, 2015 until we hit August. And that was a significant, that was a real VIX event, right? And um, so this really paints a picture on the thinking behind uh, why Navitar developed VAX. VAX meaning, uh, you know, the volatility anxiety that um, uh, clients, uh, you know, a certain percentage of everybody's clients exhibit. And it's a really pretty simple idea. Market volatility, number one, can be scary. And two, nervous clients require, uh, in fact, uh, all of you know, demand attention. They call and the phone rings, uh, so it disrupts the office and the regular routine, or they quietly worry and stew. You know, sometimes, and we saw a ton of this in 2008, you know, they're unafraid to open their statements. There are a lot of emotional states that are going on. And, you know, we know that advisors have spent a lot of time taking their risk tolerances, Alan. They spent a lot of time getting their clients into an appropriate asset allocation, you know, getting the right mix so that uh, they can, in fact, sail through these volatility events. And that does not, that does not do anything about the underlying emotion. Um, and, you know, as this chart, you know, as previous chart showed, market volatility can happen out of nowhere. Yeah, and August was quite a joke. Oh, yeah. We've had a lot of clients calling in and saying, you know, can't we use technology to manage this? And uh, so this is, uh, if we had to call this something, we'd call it the age of anxiety. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that's right. And, um, it, it, and in fact, I, I'm pretty sure I know that's right. And I think every, every, uh, every advisor on this call is going to have a different uh, set of clients and different experience and how much, you know, how much anxiety their clients are feeling. But, um, you know, I've done a lot of research. A lot of folks have done research, uh, you know, Bloomberg and others into this issue. And what I can tell you is that since 2008, uh, we are dealing with, uh, you know, a, a generally more reactive, more nervous uh, investor uh, group than we have in past periods. You know, if you look at uh, clients in the 1982 to 1999 time period, for example, it would be pretty easy as a client, I think it's pretty easy as, uh, as you know, as an investment manager to assume that bull markets were the norm. Hey, uh, hang on just discussion. one second, Sharpus. The yes. New York Times now reporting Federal Reserve holds off on raising interest rates until after market turmoil. 
<laughs> okay. I think that's pretty much as predicted. So, um, you know, the risk in that case uh, that, you know, really cropped up, uh, you know, over the past couple of months as they try to move back to a normalization uh, at the Fed is, is market turmoil. It is volatility. So glad we're all here talking about this. Um, so, you know, clearly there are lasting impacts from the crisis. And, uh, you know, these anxiety levels vary. Um, and you'll find the client segment differently on how they react. A uh, real interesting thing that's happening is that there is, um, uh, you know, uh, a propensity to have more anxiety in some of the younger generations. You know, they did not live through 82 to 99 and smooth sailing, but with, instead they've seen every five years, you know, the Asian contagion and the dot bust and, of course, 2008, and that, that you know, creates a little more um, uh, concern. And almost any survey and, and, and scan of the sort of investors today, high net worth and the mass affluent, the word that comes up every single time is control, and the word that comes up every single time is trust, and so you get through these, um, these periods, um, uh, you know, which are impacting your planning, your discussions, your office operations, you know, by, you know, by being proactive with these client groups. Is this uh, one of those situations where there's uh, opportunity as well as danger? Absolutely. Um, you know, if, if you if you've got clients and you uh, know that they're highly anxious, and you can you 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 can use that as a way to drive the relationship by being very proactive, it's a huge opportunity. And if you have prospects who you know have been sitting around worrying about whether or not they're in the right asset allocation, if they're doing a good job managing their money, etc., and you can type them on sort of volatility, as you can with this VAX rating you can reach out and technology can do that. Now the real, uh, a very interesting study that's just come out that was lo looking across uh, a pretty big universe of investors uh, had something that I think many advisors uh, will agree with, but I think um, an awful lot of funds and others are sort of shocked by, which is that relationship actually trumps performance when it comes to asset, asset gatherers. Trumps performance? Trumps performance. What does that mean? It means that stronger relationship uh, um, investors um, are gathering four to one assets over just pure strong performers. In other words, investor relationships are hugely important. This is, and this is, uh, this is a brand new study um, and it's, it's, uh, it's getting a lot of attention. So there, you know, relationship is hugely important, more so than people thought, if, if you're to believe the study, and it's, it's incredible, incredible study. So that, that relationship piece is exactly what uh, Navitar does, by the way. It, it helps advisors maintain superior client relationships and grow their AUM faster. Uh, number two, it enables them to use a more disciplined, targeted approach with their prospects. And uh, Navitar is going to help you better communicate with your clients in the key moments, like the one we just had, where the Fed decided to hold off, uh, help you better demonstrate your understanding and caring for your clients through specific actions that you take, and of course do a better job of managing your staff and advisors. So yeah, let's look, th that's exactly, you know, how, you know, well-applied technology uh, can, can, can benefit uh, a firm. and. Uh, what we're going to do now is look at how a very specific uh, situation, uh, anxiety about volatility, can be applied with VAX. So, you know, it starts uh, with a, a real-world rating of VAX, where you're going to, and I'll, I'm going to show you how Navitar has created this. But essentially, it lets you segment clients on how they react during a volatility event. And this is different than when you test their risk tolerance and all the other tools that are out there that are very good so that you can get them into the right asset allocation. This is a score that shows not how they think they're going to react uh, to market downturns or, or volatility, which exists in every asset class. It, it actually lets you segment them based on how they behave when the bullets start to fly. 
And that is sometimes a different thing and then requires a different approach. So if you went through August 2015 yep. and you segmented your clients along the VAX rating, which we're going to show you, the second thing you can do once you've got that in there and you go through a few volatility periods, you're having conversations, clients are calling and you're beginning to see, hey, some, you know, 5 or 10% are highly reactive to volatility, some are highly resilient. You're getting them segmented into that. You can now customize communications and modulate mm -hmm. how you handle those, those clients as volatility events happen it appropriately to the, you know, the client and, and, and how they react. And then the, the third uh, part here, which we will wait to come up, is of course you can automate these processes, right? Uh, the idea when you're, when you're doing this over a, a large group of clients and across, say, several advisors and, or many advisors in your firm, you can get a very good window into how you're handling you know, those types of clients, uh, you know, ac across the board. And if you're being proactive with the highly reactive clients, you can also help improve not only the client relationships by reaching out to them, but <laughs> showing that you, 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 you understand this and being right on the ball, but also reducing the office staff and disruption because this can be put, uh, as we're going to show you, into your task list and, you know, make it much, much easier to manage. So the segmentation examples, uh, how, how, so this, this, everyone gets to decide their own segmentations, right? This is just a, kind of a straw man that we built for the purposes of showing you how you could use technology to That's right. manage this process. So, so this is available and, and, you know, you can use this, this VAX rating, uh, you know, right on the system and uh, we segment clients, again, real world based on, on you know, how they're behaving when your assessment of how they behave when the bullets start to fly is either highly anxious, somewhat anxious, somewhat resilient, or highly resilient. So you know the highly anxious uh, clients are calling in. You know, as, as you know, I'm sure everyone on the call knows better than we. You know, they they exhibit different states from that anxiety. They may be angry. They may be worried. They they may just be asking the quiet question. Um, the somewhat anxious. Um, you know, maybe doesn't call, but maybe your discussions reveal that uh, even though they don't call in uh, proactively, they're anxious and they need to be at least kept up to date, maybe not a phone call. You may find that there's some, there are clients that are somewhat resilient, um, you know, but there's also a lot of quiet nervousness. So they, you, they, they might appear resilient, but you might, you know, you might even put in a rating, you know, the, the the, the anxious but silent you could add to VAX because these are the folks that don't open their statements that are, okay. that, are, that are churning. You have no idea, right? And then, but you're going to certainly have highly resilient clients, hopefully a, a significant part of your, uh, your base, who uh, trust what you're doing, who feel very good about the asset allocation that you put them in, and, you know, who, who, are, who are reacting consistent to their predicted risk tolerances, you know, that they don't need uh, uh, you know, a lot of special communications during a volatility event. Yep, yep. So uh, are, are we going to see how we actually put this into, into practice? Sure. Well, so, you know, uh, there are a lot of different things you can do inside the, the CRM system, but, you know, just to look at, say, uh, a communications uh, element of it, um, you know, your highly anxious folks, you know, you probably want to give a proactive call, and that should, you know, that can once they've been typed and they're sitting inside the system and segmented, uh, you know, if somebody wants to hit the big red switch, we've got a volatility event, those yep. clients with to-dos to call today are going to show up right on the dashboard for everybody. Someone anxious might get an email, uh, maybe some bi-weekly communications, however, however you, you know, want to set it up. Uh, somewhat resilient, uh, no immediate communication, but you may want to touch them. And the highly resilient, you know, you might actually worry, Alan. Um, you wake them up. If you wake them yeah, up, don't if they're up. happy. They <laughs> they're not really worried about it. And if you if you if an anxious phone call comes in from you now, maybe they're saying maybe there's something I need to worry about. So we believe that there, you know, and, and I know you've talked to an awful lot of the clients believe yep. that there's a, a lot of uh, merit to segmenting, uh, you know, on this basis. 
Okay, so uh, now we're going to show you how to execute this using technology, and we're going to switch screens to Navitar 1, and Caton will show you how easy we make it to respond appropriately. Caton? Yep, thanks, Alan. So, so as all of you heard, kind of these, these steps, and from our feedback that kind of we've talked to customers, we've talked to prospects, uh, one, one common theme that we kept on hearing is that, yeah, it's logical, it makes sense, Sometimes they say, well, they are aware that they need to do these things, but it's just that either they don't know how to act upon those or they don't have the right technology or the tools to, to impact them. And secondly, because the nature of these events, it tends to kind of disrupt your day-to-day -day schedule. So keeping track of, okay, I need to call my clients today and have I done that or not, or more importantly, a, a week from today, I'll completely lose track of that, hey, I need to do a follow-up. So what I'm going to show you is how a, a system like Navitar can help you manage through these things. And obviously it requires some planning and, and some, um, some setup. But first let me show you kind of how, how, how streamlined process can become once you're using our system. And so anytime an event like this happened and happens and even today's situation had the had the Fed decided to to change the interest rate. I mean, I'm sure tomorrow onwards you would have received phone calls. All you have to do then is in our system, and I'll explain what these auto plans are later. But yeah, there's a there's a whole process that you can set up. I just go in there and I automate the process, right? So I just go in into the system. I push a button and I say, well, let me activate this process, and this what it does is automatically can, gives me a to-do list of things that I, I need to start working on. Right, so I, as an advisor, I, am, I will be prompted now to do things. Right? So if I, if I go into the system and let's say I log in, I will have my to-do list. Just one second. So when I log into the system, I will be able to see a list of, kind of all the things that are on my to-do list. And all the plans, kind of all the activities that were created now show up on my to-do list. So let's take an example, right? We were talking about the fact that for the highly resilient uh, or the highly anxious customers, we need to, we need to have a plan in place. So our system has what we call as a marketing initiatives. I can, I can create a list of all these highly resilient clients. What, what it will do for me is when I'm on my to-do list, it will show me that, hey, I need to send an email to all these clients. Right. That's the first thing that will show up on my to-do list. And now I have the ability to send that email out and I can then broadcast that email to everyone in my to-do list. Or I could be, uh, I could be working on, uh, I could be working on, on a specific client and I'll be able to see that. And so let's take, let's go back to kind of the, the highly anxious clients. So what the system is telling me is I need to send an email to all these clients and then I need to probably kind of follow up with conversations with each of them too. So I have my list prepared. At this point, I'll go ahead. I'll say I want to email all these clients. It will show me the list. So I kind of have three clients that I am responsible for who have classified as highly anxious. I'll see those. Something we recommend is creating specific specialized communication. And, and, and to one of the slides earlier, we talked about the fact that uh, kind of the, the kind of communication you'll be sending out may be different. It needs to be modulated. So for my highly anxious clients, I want to send a simple email out. This should not take me too much time to set up. I then go ahead and I send out the email. And as soon as I send it out, the clients have received this email. That's my step one 
has been completed. I can go into the system and I could say, hey, I just completed this task. Let me mark this as completed and save it. Now, the beauty of the system is I completed this task, but we had a process set up which, which was saying that, hey, I should send out an email immediately to my highly anxious clients and I need to follow up in one week or two weeks. And that follow up now automatically got created. So you'll see the second email has to be sent out next week. Now I don't need to worry about this, but next week I would have forgotten about this. But on the 24th when I log back into the system, there will be a task set for me which reminds me to send this email out. So that's something that um, uh, that that the auto plan is facilitating, and let me show you an example of the email that we had just sent out. And so I, I just switched to my Outlook system. I received so this was the initial email that we had drafted and sent out to our highly anxious client. So they get an email, simple enough, but essentially pacifying them, letting them know we are on top but then also suggesting that, hey, should we have a call today? Now, I want to follow it up with an actual call. So again, if I go back to my system, I have my to-do list. So you'll see that on my today's list of all the calls I need to make, everything is already on my dashboard. These items got created because we activated the process which says, hey, we are in a, in a volatile event. And since we had defined the process, it was it's now showing up. So I need to call these three clients. Now, at the same time, I have to make sure that when I call a client, I do have all the information about them. Because what tends to happen is I may be calling them about this event, and they may or may not be uh, as responsive. But they may have something else. They may have had called our uh, our service line, they may have something else that they, they care about, that they've been working with me or someone else in my team. So before I call this client, I need to have a complete profile view. So at any point, I can look at their profile, I can see the history, I see that they're, I've already tagged them with a high, they're the highly anxious client, how much business we have with them, what were some of my last communication items and client servicing, right? So I can see that we still have an open case around client servicing and if I want to see details, I, I should click on that. I can see that this was something around opening a Schwab account. So we had started this process and I can get a graphic also in terms of what are the steps that we have completed. And currently, we're on this last step. We need to submit some documents for approval. So while it's not related to the specific event, these are things that are important for me to know. So when I talk to the client, I can also update him or her about where things stand. And if they have a question, I have already, kind of, I have all the information that I know already available to me. Right, so we, we, we provide a system that can help you track and look at all this information, look at all the plans. You can see that kind of for this client, we have the volatile event plan already underway. You can track fees. I can uh, I can also see any documents. So if I if I have some documents related to this client, I'll be able to see them all within the profile. So I can see this information, and now I'm ready to call. I can call this client, and based on the call details. I'll just go ahead, make my updates, right? and I can log my notes. And then market has completed. So I've done this. I can go ahead and save these notes. And now what happens is when I go back to my client profile. So if I go back into the system and say, well, I'll let me look at my task list again, we'll see my task list has reduced. It's only showing me the things that um, 
that uh, I need to know about. And on the profile of the client, the next step will be there. So if I go and look at not today's list, but if I look at my uh, what are things I need to do this month, I'll see that kind of there's a follow-up set up with this client already. So these are things that the system is now prompting me to do. So this was how I could hi handle the highly anxious clients. Uh, in a similar way, uh, if I, if you can also manage your somewhat anxious clients, but the communication will be different. So for them, we will have a separate marketing initiative. The process will be the same, but again, you need to modulate your communication. So I can go in here, the list is already built out, and I'll go in there, and this will be a different type of communication. So I go in there, set up, choose the appropriate email that I want to send out, and then send it out from the system. And similar things. Now this is a different process. So here when I go and say that, hey, I've completed this task, I sent the initial email to all my clients, and save it, this will now again prompt me that the next step, but here the next step, the follow-up email, we don't have to do anything for two more weeks. So I only need to worry about this in early October. And that's how you can manage these events through the system. Now, I was showing you how this was, kind of how you could do that, but obviously this required you to set up the system the right way. And part of it is what Jarvis talked about when you're looking at any client based on their behavior, you should be able to go and assign them different VAX ratings. That's one part of it. The second thing is to be prepared for such events, and that we do by setting up these auto plans. And these are very easy to set up. I, for example, if I wanted to create a new auto plan, I can just go ahead and I'll, I'll quickly walk you through this just to illustrate that it's a simple enough mechanism yet very powerful, right? So let's say uh, I want to set up an auto plan and say this is a critical event and I want to store these in my crisis management folders and I this is applicable for all my, any of my clients for whom, let's say, we have a specific VAX rating. And so I want to go and define and say this is for all my clients who are, let's say, somewhat resilient. And I'll go ahead and save it. So I've defined this, and now I can then define my follow-up process. And so for all these clients who are somewhat resilient, what do I want to do? And then I'll go ahead and set up the steps. So maybe I want the, the first step is for all these clients, and it's something that the advisor do, should do. So whoever is the advisor who is responsible for these clients, I can go and select that, indicate that it should be the advisor. If something happened today, maybe after five days, I need to put a call in. So after five days from today, I'll say, discuss market situation and save this. It's as easy as that. So I've set up the auto plan. I have set up what the first step should be. And maybe there's a follow-up step, and that's equally easy to set up. So I can go in here and say that, okay, once I do this step, maybe three weeks from that step when that is completed, I should do my next step. So I can then go ahead and add a follow-up. Okay. And again, financial advisor should do it. Now in your case, sometimes kind of depending on your structure, maybe you may want the client service rep to follow up and that's fine. So you could set it up that way and you could say, well, three weeks from the completion of the previous step, just do a follow-up check-in with the client and then I go ahead and set that up. So literally, kind of, it took me about two minutes to set this plan up. And I have the plan, and all I have to do next is 
for example, today's situation, if the rates had changed, I would have just gone in here and activated this plan. And this then automatically lets me follow a process. The system is reminding me to do certain things and then I can kind of, I can be on top of things. And obviously this is trying to mitigate and kind of you allowing you to be in front of your clients or in front of the situation. You may still get inbound calls. Right? So you're sending that email out, you may still get inbound calls and that's something kind of the system obviously is designed to help you with, to look at the profile, look at all the information and, and log this in. So hopefully that gives you a sense on how a system like Navitar can help you manage through situations like these by kind of uh, automating and kind of creating a creating a, an automated process. Uh, the advisors getting reminded about certain things that have to be done. Uh, you being able to set up the mass communication as well as individual communication in the system, and again more importantly the follow-up steps because a lot of times I know I have to do something today but where things fall is after today kind of I completely forgot that hey in two weeks time I had to kind of send an email out uh, just to check in with the with the client. With that uh, Alan let's go back to the slides and I guess next thing will be I can because I guess we can take questions. Yes, yes. Uh, hey, looks great, Caitlin. Thank you very much. So it is time to take your questions. We've got uh, five or six questions that have been posted. First one uh, is how many of your clients are using this? Well, we're just rolling it out and out to our clients as a regular part of our wealth management service. Of course, there is no charge because upgrades and enhancements are always included with the Navitar system. What is Navitar and how does it work with Salesforce? Well, Navitar is one of 25 Gold Alliance partners of Salesforce. We build financial products that run on the Salesforce platform. We have 600 clients in more than 35 countries and we've been serving clients for about a decade. We have 100 employees in Navitar. How much, how much does it cost? There's the cost question. Whenever we do a webinar, somebody asks, uh, well, there are variables, right? But uh, figure it's about the price of a cup of coffee per user per day. And I'm talking Starbucks coffee on Wall Street. Who, who sets up the auto actions? So as, as Kate took you through it, it's not a complicated process, but, and, and we do offer unlimited training uh, regardless. Uh, some people just don't want to do it, and that's fine, whether it's uh, a report or an auto action or creating a field for you or helping you upload data into the system. Uh, our team in New York is available to help you with that. And with that, I think we've covered all the questions. So we just have one more slide, and we're going to wrap this up for you. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about how Navitar can help your practice. There's uh, my contact information up there. That's not me in the picture, by the way, but it is my email address and telephone number, and we'd be real happy to hear from you and tell you more about Navitar and give you a, a personalized demo. So at this point, Caton, Jarvis, and I want to thank you for being a great audience today. And we look forward to seeing you in the future in our next Advisor Productivity Series webinar. And we, we want to keep these brief and a lot of fun. And so we hope you got something out of this on this very exciting day when the Fed decided to do nothing. So thank you again, all of you, for joining us. And we hope to hear from you at Navitar.